autumn, one of the best times to visit Melbourne. Hi guys, Rob here. And today I'm going to show you some top spots to find some beautiful autumn leaves in Melbourne and Victoria. So let's go. And at the end, I'll show you my favourite spot to find these autumn leaves. In this video, I'll take a look at some popular spots in Victoria and Melbourne. This video took me a lot longer than I expected to make, and I really wanted to get this out sooner. Having said that, it was a real joy to make this and get to visit some of these beautiful places in Victoria. Mother Nature isn't an exact science, so each year it's a little different. So some of these trees don't change colour the same time as the other trees. So in saying that, it's a bit difficult to give an exact time frame in order to see the best colours. But as a general rule of thumb, roughly from about mid-April to mid-May is probably the best time. I mean, some of these trees still have the beautiful autumn colours early in winter. To help out, I'll put the dates that I filmed each area at the bottom of the screen so you get an idea. I'll start with Melbourne Seabird area and then move out to country Victoria so you can see how the colours get more spectacular as you move out of the city. As I always do, if you're unfamiliar with Melbourne, it's located in red on the map. I'll start with the CBD area and the parks located around here. These parks are free to enter. Firstly, Flagstaff Gardens. This was the weakest of all the parks that I filmed the autumn foliage. It's still a nice park to visit with some nice autumn colours, but if you're just coming for the autumn plumage, it's a bit underwhelming really, and you'll be a little bit disappointed. Carlton Gardens has some evergreen and deciduous trees such as the elm. The gardens are of a Victorian landscape design. I just love it in the autumn here with all its leaves. It's a beautiful park to visit in Melbourne. It's also home to the Royal Exhibition Buildings and the Melbourne Museum as well as the IMAX theatre. The Fitzroy Gardens covers some 64 acres of land and is on the edge of the CBD of Melbourne. It's home to Captain Cook's Cottage, a popular tourist spot in Melbourne. In autumn, it has some great colours with different trees, including an avenue of English elms. Great for a stroll any time of year, but particularly in autumn. It's also worth crossing the road from here to St. Patrick's Cathedral. Around the cathedral is just beautiful in all of the autumn colours. A block away from the Fitzroy Gardens is the Treasury Gardens. So it's easy just to do both at the same time because they're so close to each other. The highlight here is the colours around the JFK Memorial. There's an ornamental lake here and a waterfall. Not only beautiful, but a relaxing place in the city. Across the Yarra River is some of the city's best parks and gardens, as shown on the map here. The first being Alexandra Gardens, which starts on the south bank of the Yarra River. It forms part of the, the main parklands area. This area covers nearly 123 hectares. From Alexander Gardens, you can walk through to Queen Victoria Gardens and then onto King's Domain. And past this is the Royal Botanic Gardens. These beautiful parked areas contain monuments, statues, flower gardens, native trees, and a mixture of deciduous and evergreens. A great place to see Melbourne's autumn leaves without having to go far from the city, and it's all walkable. It's a really popular place for Melbournians to come any time of year. The lakes attract birds and ducks, so it's very family friendly. In the autumn, you get all the leaves falling on the grass. Just walk around this place and take it all in. you also find the Shrine of Remembrance here, which I've done previously on another video. Walk around these parks, and you'll discover some lovely coloured trees. I've tried to come back and video the changing colours of the trees later on in autumn. Unfortunately, the camera didn't pick up the yellow colours as good as I'd hoped, as it was much better with my naked eyes. While you're here, 
have a look down St Kilda Road which runs parallel to these parks. It always looks good in autumn. The Victorian barracks look really nice with the colours on the buildings. I'm in the Botanic Gardens in Melbourne here and you can see that the leaves are starting to turn colour. I'll try and show you what I took a couple of years ago, a bit later in the season. You can see the differences. I just love coming here in the autumn. It's a fantastic place to come in Melbourne. And I think for the city, it's probably the best spot you'll find the autumn leaves. I just wanted to mention also, just by the Yarra River, there's a bit of autumn plumage as well, which looks pretty decent. If we move out of the city, but still in the greater Melbourne area, one spot that stands out is Mount Dandenong. It's about an hour's drive from the city. There's a number of beautiful gardens here, and they have spectacular autumn colours. Botanic Gardens at Mount Dandenong. Have a stroll around this 36 hectare garden and take in all its autumn beauty. Coming on the weekend, it can get quite busy, particularly in finding a car park can be a bit of a hassle. But this garden is well worth a visit. With the Botanic Gardens being so big, there's plenty of spots that you can find some autumn colours for photos. There was a lot of people having outings or picnics, and what a perfect spot for a day trip from Melbourne. Just look at the amazing colours of this tree. Just fantastic. George Tyndale Garden is another lovely place to visit on Mount Dandenong. Not quite as popular as the Botanic Gardens though. There were some nice colours here, but not as spectacular as the ones I saw in the Botanic Gardens. Still a pretty place to visit. The most popular place for autumn leaves and amazing colours has to be Alfred Nicholas Memorial Gardens. You can get some really fantastic colours here. Just gorgeous. If you're a keen photographer, this is where they come to take photos of the autumn leaves. One of the most photographed gardens here in Mount Dandenong is Alfred Nicholas Gardens. As you can see why, it's just beautiful. It's a very popular place for Instagram photos too, so I'll join them. You can see my Instagram link here. These gardens are definitely worth seeing. Cloud Hill has some picturesque gardens. At the time of making this video, it had a $10 entry fee. Dang, there's also some spectacular gardens you can come visit. I'm here at the beginning of water. Not quite got the colour as before when the leaves were still green. As you can see now, it's changing. It's a really well maintained garden here, and it's great to come here any time of year. I've come for the autumn leaves, and there's plenty on show. For more information on Mount Daniel, have a look at their website shown. Another really popular day trip for Melbourne is Mount Macedon which is just under an hour's drive from the city. Here you can experience some really incredible autumn foliage. As you drive into Mount Macedon, you'll be greeted by some wonderful autumn colours. First stop here is the Honour Avenue. This is filled with oaks honouring the men and women of Macedon and Mount Macedon who enlisted for services in World War I. I was here at the end of April and it seemed like it was nearing the end of the peak of the autumn colours here. Although there was a couple of trees that still were green and in that I mean some of the oak trees. Further up the mountain there's a couple of worthwhile gardens to see. The first, Tooth Tara, is a private garden open to the public. The highlight here is around the lake. It's just gorgeous, peaceful and tranquil. Even though it wasn't the best of days, you can still enjoy the beauty of this place. Lots of autumn colours and well worth a visit. Past these gardens and further up the mountain, there's lots of scenic spots along the road, from the autumn trees lining the road to entrances to houses. It's a real treat just to walk along Mount Macedon Road. The other garden here to visit is Forest Glade Gardens, and wow, 
these gardens blew me away. As far as gardens and autumn leaves, this was one of the most spectacular gardens I've seen. Water features, an English section, a Japanese section, a wooded area, lots of lawn and space, all wonderfully landscaped. If you're looking for autumn colours, you won't be disappointed here. It's just like something you'll see in a glossy magazine. I was just in awe of these stunning colours. Believe me, you don't want to forget your camera for this garden. I came here on Easter Monday, so it was quite crowded. And honestly, the parking was atrocious. There's no parking zone outside, so the people who did park in front were getting parking fines. There is a free bus shuttle service at the bottom of the mountain that stops in front of the gardens, or you can just park further down the road and walk. For further information on this place, have a look at the websites, visit Macedon Ranges or mountmacedon.org.au, shown on screen. Ballarat is about an hour's drive from Melbourne, and I was there at the end of autumn last year when I was making some videos on Ballarat. There are some really nice places to visit here during autumn, starting right on Sturt Street. The island that runs down the centre of the street has some beautiful golden autumn leaves. You can have a look at some of the parks around Ballarat and see those wonderful colours. The best place of course is always the Botanic Gardens and Ballarat's ones has some gorgeous autumn colours. You could do Ballarat in a day trip but there's lots to do here as I've shown in my previous videos. Have a look at Visit Ballarat's website for more information. One little Victorian town that popped up when I was researching places to see the autumn leaves was Wahala, about a two and a half hour drive from Melbourne. It's a pretty little country town and before making this video I'd never heard of this place before. It's an old gold mining town set in a valley. I'm coming from the historic mining town of Wahala but I'm not looking for gold here. I'm looking for the autumn leaves. While there are some pretty autumn leaves, it wasn't quite as spectacular as some of the other places I visited. Well, not on the date that I came anyhow. There are a few nice places for photos of autumn colours. Aside from that, it still stands out as a beautiful spot in Victoria to visit. It's a small enough place that you can just park your car and walk around the town. There's lots of history to it. You can even go in one of the mines. You could do it as a day trip, but it is a fairly long day with a long drive. You can learn more about the town at its website shown. One town synonymous for Victoria's autumn colours is Bright. It's a fair distance from Melbourne though, like three and a half hours drive. But if you're looking for some amazing autumn colours, then it's well worth the trip. I stayed overnight here to film this video. As you drive in, the nearby town of Myrtleford will give you a taste of what's to come with the autumn colours. The time I came, Bright was having this autumn festival, which they hold annually at the end of April. As you drive into town, the trees lining the roads show off their beautiful, gorgeous autumn colours. It's just beautiful to drive into. And there's just colour everywhere in town. If you want to see a Victorian town in all its autumn glory, this is the place to come. There's plenty of walking and bike paths around town to follow. Not only that, Bright has a lot of other things to do for the tourists in town and in the area. And because it is such a long trip from Melbourne, it's well worth staying here for a couple of nights at least. I stayed only overnight and I thought it wasn't enough time to get the best out of Bright. In an upcoming video, I'll show you where I stayed. I just found it lovely to walk around the streets or even just down by Ovens River that runs through the town and enjoy the beautiful scenery here. During the Autumn Festival, some establishments here in Bright and in the local area had some open gardens so you could go in and see some wonderful autumn colours here as well as other trees and flowers. Entry to these gardens ranged from being free or between two to five dollars. Due to my time constraints on my trip here, I wasn't able to visit as many gardens as I would have liked, but the ones I did see, I was pretty impressed. 
if you visit Bright's tourist office in town, they have a listing of all the gardens that are open. For more information, have a look at the website shown. So of all the places I went to, I found Bright had the best autumn leaves. Also that covers the area of Murderford, which is just down the road a bit. The colours are amazing here. It's quite a long trip from Melbourne, three and a half hours, so I would recommend probably staying overnight or longer. At the moment they've got a festival on here, so it's a good time to come. Closer to Melbourne, one of the best spots was Forest Glade Gardens at Mount Macedon. It makes for a fantastic day trip. I'd also highly recommend Mount Dandenong. Some of the gardens there, their autumn colours are just incredible. So if you plan on seeing some of the autumn colours in Victoria, I hope this video gives you some ideas. If you know of some other amazing places, let me know in the comments below. For more travel videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.